In this video, I'm going to be talking about the psychodynamic assumptions. Um, so the first assumption is the tripartite personality. So this is where Freud sort of said that our personality is structured or split into three parts, and these will sort of interact with each other. Um, however, they develop at different stages. So we have the id, the ego, and the superego. So the id can be seen as the devil. It's an easy way to remember it. It's present from birth, so therefore it contains our primitive instincts. So it's sort of concerned with gratification of urges and desires, so it can be quite selfish and demanding. So you could sort of link this to a child. Um, like a baby will just cry for, for whatever they want because they just demand it, demand food whenever they want it. So it's, um, it's based on the pleasure principle to avoid pain and displeasure. The next is the ego, which is classed as the referee between the id and the superego. So this develops two years later. Um, it's the rational part that sort of controls the urges and desires of the id. So here it says satisfies some of the id's drive, but in a more socially acceptable way. So that's a bit of the superego coming into play. Therefore, it's sort of governed by the reality principle. So can you really do what the ego wants to do? And then lastly, the super ego, which is classed as sort of the angel. So that develops two years later again at the age of four. So this is part of our moral conscience now. So it's what we believe to be right and wrong. So as we're grown up, we sort of learn through punishment, reward, what, what's seen as right and wrong. Um, therefore, it's developed through good relationships, usually with your parents, because when you are that young, you spend a lot of time with your parents and it's governed by the morality principle. So considering how all these interact with each other, we can sort of display different behaviours or traits. So if your id is quite dominant and you have a weaker superego, your more impulsive and selfish side is going to come out. So that's sort of, you're going to be a bit more maybe aggressive or, yeah. So a dominant superego, however, you can sort of have excessive guilt. You're constantly thinking, have what I've done is right. Like that sort of thing. So that's sort of the overview of the tripartite personality. It's quite a simple one. Um, you can remember it like id is the devil on your shoulder, the super ego is the angel and sort of your ego is your brain in the middle having to be rational. Um, also tripartite has the word tri meaning three. So you can sort of remember the three different parts that way as well. Um, so now moving on to the assumption two, which is influence of childhood experiences. So this assumes that your early childhood experiences have an effect on your later development. So our behaviour and emotions can be linked to certain stages within our childhood to sort of explain why we have behaved like that. So these stages are known as the psycho psychosexual stages. Um, we sort of have a funny acronym to remember them by, it's a bit inappropriate. Um, old age pensioners love genitals. So um, there are the three different, five different stages there. So during each of these stages, your sort of libido or life force is attached to a certain part of your body. And um, this will sort of be explained in later slides. The three main stages to consider is oral, anal and the phallic stages. So within any of these, if you have overindulgence, which is sort of too much of it, or you can have frustration, which is not enough, it can lead to a fixation. And a fixation is, is linking back to your id. It's like a persistent focus on what the id wants, the pleasure seeking energies that, that the id sort of wants to grasp onto. Um, so the five stages are oral, anal, phallic, latency and genitals. So the first stage being oral, this um, is age zero to one. So therefore it's linked to your, your mouth through breastfeeding or bottle feeding. So if you don't get enough of that, you become frustrated. And when you're older, you can become a nail biter, a smoker, sarcastic and quite a jealous person. Um, whereas if you get too much of it, you can be very gullible and overly optimistic. Yeah. Moving on to the next stage, the anal stage. This is age one to three. Um, its body part is linked to the anus, therefore potty training. Um, so if you're 
frustrated of that. Um, you can be quite the well the technical term is anal expulsion whereas this sort of just means you're messy carefree you're a bit too sort of chilled out about things whereas if you overindulge and you get too much you could be anal retentive so very controlling strict quite tidy you're, you're very kind of uptight next is the phallic stage so this develops between the age of three and six it's linked to genitals masturbation um this freud sort of proposed that this is where girls and boys tend to split um so carl jung suggested that girls experience an electrocomplex so they sort of become quite resentful towards their mother after seeing that their father might have a bit more power in the household and um, this is well as freud coined the term penis envy um, so she'll be a bit more possessive of her father but then as she starts to resolve this when she gets older she realises that she's not getting a penis she's, so she kind of moves away from her dad and becomes more attached to her mum so she sort of learns her morals and her principles from the mum instead of the father and then boys will experience the Oedipus complex so this is where Damn. Freud proposes that the boys develop an unconscious sexual desire for their mother um, so as a result of this they are quite envious and jealous of their father so they might see them as a rival because um, they just want their mum's affection and attention and their dad is able to give them that but the boys can't um, however during the resolution process they the boys will somehow start identifying with the same sex parents so it will be the dad um so they, they'll start start to identify with their dads and internalize their own behaviors morals values um however overall for girls or boys fixation at this stage means that they're going to be unable to build healthy relationships because they're going to be stuck with these sort of unrealistic unreasonable beliefs and they can become quite narcissistic the next stage is latency so this is age 6 to 12 the libido is dormant so this is sort of when you're getting in into school building up your friendships with the same genders and sort of identifying who everyone is and and what everyone's like um, and then the final stage is the genital stage. So this is 12 plus. So when you start to hit puberty and things like that. So the libido is focused on the genitals. And this is sort of the exploration of sexual relationships. So overall, these psychosexual stages are quite important, as, as Freud would suggest, in ensuring that we develop healthy relationships and we become quite a, we learn our morals basically. Um, so for the next assumption, the third one, this is the unconscious mind. So Freud argues that our unconscious mind can determine and influence our behaviour. And he also says our mind is made up of three parts. So I use the iceberg analogy. So the tip of the iceberg is conscious, things that we remember. Pre-conscious or subconscious is what we can access during dreams and therapy. So this is just along sort of the sea line just a little bit under and the unconscious is something that we are completely unable to access so this is the very bottom of the iceberg or the part we can't see um so our unconscious mind contains early childhood traumas and phobias as we the ego will sort of use these defense mechanisms to protect itself from anxiety inducing thoughts so it's sort of trying to keep us calm and in reality um, so the first defense mechanism probably the main one to discuss and focus on is repression so this is pushing our painful memories right down into our unconscious mind so that we cannot think about it at all um, and then the two others um, is displacement so you'll sort of substitute with an object so maybe instead of smoking you might have a stress ball or something to just substitute that impulse and then projection is where you 
attribute your thoughts from one thing to something else. So this could be, you, you tend to use this during therapy. Um, so yeah, so that's that assumption done. It's quite easy to remember the unconscious mind. You're just trying to focus on the fact that we use ego defense mechanisms to really suppress them traumatic experiences. So when you're older, this is why you can't sort of remember much about your childhood from an early age as well, because obviously as you grow up, you have a lot of nasty falls and things like that. And that can be quite big. It can be quite a big thing when you're young. So you, you kind of push it down and, and forget about it. But also it's where a lot of your phobias come from. So if you have an unexplained phobia, it might be from your childhood, but you, you won't know that because your ego has, has repressed it but you'll still have them feelings and worry around it. So yeah, that's all the assumptions for the psychodynamic approach. Um, thank you for listening. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you for listening.